Well, hey, folks, welcome back. And yeah, we're going to start down by the grill. And you're looking and saying, okay, you got something new there. I purchased this a couple of weeks ago. Um, they had these rotisseries on sale for the 22 inch Weber kettle. It was on Amazon, made by a company called Only Fire. And uh, it was like 80 bucks. It was quite a deal. I got the stainless steel model. Um, it seems to be built real well. In fact, I plugged the motor in. And I thought I was broke. It was so quiet. So, but that, that was not under any load. So, we're gonna do. We're gonna try a chicken on this today, rotisserie chicken. I've done rotisserie chicken before on a Weber gas using uh, obviously a rotisserie. Uh, I've never done it on a Weber kettle. So, uh, you'll be able to see how I do that, and you can see my setup in there. I have. Uh, I'm gonna use the slow and sear, and I've got the dripping griddle on in there to keep make clean up a little easier. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is prep the bird and. Tie it up so uh, you stay tuned and uh, keep on watching. All right, after about 100 attempts here, uh, like I said, I've never done this before, uh, and I'd show you how to tie it up or truss it, but uh, this is not the right way. Uh, I watched a bunch of videos online, and this is a combination, I think, of anything, but it, it's it's going to hold. Um, I'll tell you a story back when I would do these on the uh, the gas grill many, many years ago. I put them on the rotisserie without the, the grill on, and I would turn the rotisserie on, and I would wrap string around it that way. And, uh, you know, it would take a half an hour when you were done just to clip through all the string. But it held. Uh, you know, I wasn't kidding when I said I got 75 feet, and that's enough. So this not, wasn't 75 feet. It was uh, probably about 6 feet or 8 feet. But, but it worked, and like I said, it's not the right way, so I'm not going to show you how. But uh, next thing is we're going to put it on the spit. Stay tuned. All right, onto the spit. I've got this side. I've made sure I got them into the breast. And on this side, I'm actually going to use use them to kind of pin in those legs, and then uh, tighten my screws, my thumb screws up here, real nice and tight, so she can't move. Do it on the other side, and then just you know, kind of spin around like that. And to be honest with you, I think it I think it looks good. So uh, we're going to season these up, uh, and then. Uh, we're going to get that grill going and give you a look-see. Right, so for the seasoning, we're going to use this Lori stuff, for rotisserie chicken seasoning. How can you go wrong when it's rotisserie chicken? Apparently, they use that at Sam's Club on there. So we're just going to put that on uh, liberally, and uh, we're getting that grill going as we speak. All right, so before we get her on there, um, there is... I can get you a better focus in there. There you go. Uh, this thing comes with a counterweight, and the reason for the counterweight is obviously it's not you're not going to put it on there perfectly. And if you pick it up, you can see where the where the weight is. The weight is on the breast side. So we want to take our counterweight and put it opposite of the breast side, and we're just going to install it like that, and then uh, just tighten it down. And then when we get it on the grill, we can adjust. We can adjust this back and forth to. Uh, help it turn a little bit easier. So just want to point that out, got the grill going, and we'll get you over by the grill. All right, folks, we just got things on. We're just starting to come up the temp a little bit. Uh, apologize for not showing you the whole process here. This is my first time using it, so I wanted to make sure I got things right. A um, couple things here. Let's back up a little bit. Remember, when you're doing chicken, make sure you wash your hands real good, soap and water, uh, to get any of that nasty disease off there. And then uh, we did wash the chicken. And obviously, we're going to take this chicken up to... Uh, minimal 165 internal to be safe so let's take a look inside shall we just put things on and there you can see we've got our slow and sear on the other side of dripping griddle we've got our blue bay kingsford um we've got everything with the weight on there and everything seems to be holding real nice get this back on temperature out today we're in the uh, low 40s got a little bit of a breeze um there's a lot of gaps in this thing with the holes and everything. So I've got my top vent just barely open, but there's plenty of other holes. And I got my bottom vent on the Weber at half. So we'll monitor temperatures as we go on. If we've got to make adjustments, we'll make adjustments. And we'll give, we give you a look-see as we proceed. All right, Thanks folks, for watching. 45 minutes in. Uh, lessons learned. Uh, because of all of you know, the holes for the spit and everything, uh, and it's windy out here today, uh, in order to throttle down the temp, I've had to close the bottom vent and I've got the top vent totally closed and there's still not there's still enough air coming in there to keep this thing going you know you can see if we look closer you know on this side we're about 300 almost 350 we we're almost up to 400 at one point so lesson learned there uh, let's take a quick look here oh man look at that that's 45 minutes in that's not gonna take long so we'll get this covered up again you know a lot of folks ask me 
uh, you know, where do you get all these ideas? You know, where do you find out that that rotisserie was almost half off on Amazon? And, you know, it's honestly, folks, uh, let's talk barbecue.com. It's a free website, uh, great people on there. There's people that wrote uh, barbecue books on there. There's people that have won uh, uh, barbecue championships. Uh, and just a great bunch of people. If you've got a question, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, referring to barbecue and cooking. And it's not just Weber kettles on there. It's um, people with pellet grills, people with infrared grills, people with gas grills, uh, people with stick burners. Um, everything is covered in that uh, website. And that's where I find out about a lot of the stuff on there. I mean, there's even a guy called Old Dave. Old Dave has got a blog called, I think it's called Old Dave's Farm. And he's just, he does some crazy stuff. And it's every single one of his cooks is perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect. And you want to talk about a guy that modifies his grill? Old Dave modifies his grills and does some great stuff. So check Let's Talk Barbecue out. I've said enough there, and uh, I'll probably be showing you these when they're just about plated up. Stay tuned. Last look, uh, even with the vents closed, we've been running around this 3, 300, 350 right in there. I uh, just take the champ in. We are way above 165, 175 in spots, uh, 180 like in the legs and that. So take one last look before we pull her off. And you can see uh, looking really, really nice there. So we're going to pull these off and we'll uh, let them rest and we'll give you a look, see once uh, we take a taste test. All right, folks, there's our chicken. I let it rest for about a half an hour and then I pulled it. Uh, a lot of lessons learned here. Uh, number one, do a better. Although the tying job I did, nothing fell apart. So it worked. It just wasn't uh, probably the way that everybody else does it. Uh, uh, it wasn't crispy. Uh, the, the skin wasn't crispy. Uh, if I would have left it on longer, I'm sure I would have, but it was, it was well done. I mean, it was well over 165. A lot of the areas are 185, actually. I, I actually had a, hundred, a couple that are 190. So I knew it was done. Um, these are going to make great sandwiches. I actually wish I had a roll right now because I'd, I'd, make, I'd make a chicken sandwich right now, but uh, I don't. So I'm going to bag these up, and these are going to go for uh, during the week. Uh, I'm going to do something with that uh, rotisserie setup, though, to make it a little bit more tight. Uh, that way, you know, because I want to do other things on there besides chicken. Chicken was okay doing it in an hour and a half, but um, there's other things I want to do on there that I don't want it to go that fast. So uh, I hope this was informative. Uh, as always, leave a comment. Tom Horseman on YouTube, thumbs up, and as always, I can't say it enough. Thanks for watching.